Hello and welcome to another ClickCentral.com video. Um, this is in a series of videos around doing an incremental load um, in ClickView. Um, this is the videos that go before, I could you just watch them. Um, I'm going to go through them in detail now. But they get us up to this point of setting up a loop within the script, going through day by day and creating QVDs with a month suffix on them. So end up with, with nice QVDs, get into the right <laughs> folder. There we go, um, of the of the different months that we've got in for the different years. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is actually setting up the incremental load element of that. Now, up to now, we've been covering on the recovery element. So the recovery element goes from a point in time, which will be around the 1st of November, up until yesterday, and it'll bring all the data through. And that's controlled with a variable here. So we can change that between recovery and incremental, which we'll do now. This can also be passed through from the QMC, so you can set up two tasks for this, one recovery, one incremental. Obviously, the incremental one's scheduled, the recovery one is a once-only, you run it when you want it to run. Um, so now, instead of actually setting up the start and end date, which will be used in the loop to go through day by day by day, um, we now have to decide what's going to be our start date and what's going to be our end date. Now, our end date will always be uh, yesterday. Now what we could do is have the start date as yesterday as well. So what that will do is it will say, right, okay, the beginning and end date is both yesterday. We'll go for the loop, we'll bring back yesterday, we'll append it to the information that we currently have. Hey, presto, incremental load, we've done it. Um, but we're going to make it slightly more interesting than that, just by pinching code that we've used already. Okay. So first of all, we're going to set up a, a loop that's going to go backwards in times three months um, from this month to three months in, in the past. So we'll call it um, months to check, uh, something like that. So we'll go from this month, I'll uh, put the equals in there, zero to minus three, we'll go back three months and we'll make it step minus one. So we need to do that when we're going backwards. And then just close that off there. Okay. So now we're going to check every month um, that we've got the information for. So we're going to go to loop start and pinch this um, QBD suffix because we're going to look at, you know, February's month and then January's month and that's formed as a sort of text QBD suffix. So rather than using the cursor, um, we're now going to use now. And then the whole lot, we'll put this into an, oops, there is it, put it into here, add months and then we will go back months to check so that's going to go around that loop and go 2015 or 2 2015-01, 2014-12 go back the three months you can go back as many months as you like but you really need to have an endpoint otherwise you might get caught in an infinite loop so what we're going to do now is check that that file exists so again pinching code that we've already used this line we know checks if a file exists so we'll pinch that Pop that over here, and if, okay. So we know that now if we enter this area, a file will exist um, for that data in the QVD path, which is nothing, so in other words, it's the data folder, that file name with that QVD suffix, which is year, year, month, month of that particular loop, maybe so far. Okay, so what we'll do, um, we will load at this point the max uh, date, we'll call it, and we shall load it, load max dates as max dates um, and then the QED to load from will be in the store command da -da 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 -da. that's it there's dates yes. and then finish that off there so okay, that's just going to bring back one line from the QVD that we have the reason why we're doing this probably worth pointing out is that it's okay just to pick up yesterday's day, as I've mentioned right at the very beginning, and, and keep it very simple. But what if um, the data wasn't populated for yesterday? What if there was a database problem that means it was down, it was down over the weekend, 
uh, for a number of days and data doesn't exist, well then, once it becomes available, you're probably going to get three or four days worth of data there. Um, so just doing the, let's pick yesterday's date and always go for yesterday's date is probably fine, unless something like this happens. Now, what we're do doing now um, is actually building in um, some sort of intelligence that when ClickView will say, okay, when we have um, data that goes back several days and it's just suddenly popped in there, um, get rid of that. Um, then we will allow for that and not just go for one day, we'll go for all the days that we've not got. So here we're going to find out what's the maximum date that we had um, and then we'll go a day after that basically. So we'll expect it always to be two days ago. Um, so we're going to go, there we go, so the last start date, we will pinch this, so what we're defining here, is going to equal um, peak. And I always do it. Da, 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 da. And then I can start filling in the gaps. So we've got the field name is, whoops, it is, I didn't want to cut it. I'll have to copy it. And then we're taking it from, I do the same thing again, into that. And we want to do it plus one, which should actually make it numerical. Um, but we'll just put it into a number field just in case, because we don't want an actual date, we do want a number because that's how the loop works, it, you know, it, it works from uh, the numbers. Okay, so now we've got that and hopefully we've got it in the first attempt, in other words, hopefully we, we wouldn't have missing any data. We certainly don't want to keep checking all the other months and going back three months, we're happy with what we've got. So we can exit the for loop, uh, this kind of thing, we need that there. And uh, that, what that will do is when we enter this conditional statement here, on the loop, so we'll enter his conditional statement at some point, hopefully. Um, we've now got the start date, we're happy, so if we exit four, it'll drop right down to where the cursor is now and then continue on with the program. Okay, so that's it. Um, hope you like what you've seen so far. Um, I think that's probably it for the incremental load element of it. If I think of some more um, additions to, to show you, I will um, set up some new videos. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, as always, love to hear your comments. Um, if you want to post them on you know, the YouTube channel or on the blog, clitchoncentral.com. Um, thanks very much and um, hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.